What's up everybody, how's it going? Today, I wanna share with you the story of the best decision I ever made. So sit back, relax, tickle the like button until it turns blue, and enjoy story time with your favorite 25-year-old CEO. So this story brings us all the way back to May 2016, when I had just graduated from college, and a lot of you know I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with a math degree. Now, contrary to what a lot of people online seem to think, I was not in a great place when I graduated. There are a lot of people online, especially here on YouTube, who always think like, oh, this guy graduated from an Ivy League university with a math degree, he was set for life when he graduated. No, not true. In fact, that probably couldn't be farther from the truth. Now, to understand why that isn't true, to understand why I was in a pretty bad spot when I graduated, we have to go back even a year before, to the beginning of my senior year of college. And at that point in time, I had been really lost throughout my college years. Throughout my college years, I had no idea what the fuck I wanted to do with my life beyond the vague, nebulous idea that I wanted to do something related to entrepreneurship, I wanted to one day run my own company, but I had no idea what that company was gonna be or how I was gonna build it, but I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So I jumped from major to major throughout college, really didn't know what I wanted to do. And then, at the beginning of my senior year, I decided that my plan was going to be to do an MBA immediately after I graduated. I was going to go to business school straight out of undergrad. And by the way, for those of you who know anything about business school, you know that that's atypical for business school. Most people who go to business school have at least a couple of years of work experience. But I was dead set on going straight out of undergrad, and the rationalization behind that was that I was going to basically buy myself a couple of years after undergrad. And by the way, I know that that's kind of flawed thinking because two years of an MBA costs a lot of money, but the way I was rationalizing it was I'll have two years of no real responsibilities where I can keep learning in a university setting, and I will spend those two years figuring out what company I want to build, and I'm going to launch that company. That was the plan, that's what I decided I was going to do, and that's what I spent most of my senior year trying to accomplish. I put all of my eggs into one basket. Specifically, I applied to one business school, the Wharton Business School, which is the famous business school at the university I went to, the University of Pennsylvania. That's where I wanted to go. I figured that that was the school that I had the highest chance of getting into because I was an undergrad there. And by the way, keep in mind, like I said, when you go to business school, typically you have a lot of work experience under your belt. I didn't have that, so I was going to have an uphill battle to get into it. But so I really worked hard my entire senior year. I put so much effort into the essays, you know, the essays that you write for business school application, and I made it to the final stage, the interview stage, and I was happy with how it went. I was really confident, but to my dismay, in March 2016, when the results came out, I was rejected from the Wharton MBA program. Now, I remember that time vividly. I was very down. I was really disappointed. I had put so much effort into it. I had really dreamed of getting into that program, and I had started thinking about how am I going to spend those two years? How am I going to try to launch my company? Blah, blah, blah. Even though I didn't really have an idea for a company, but that was the fantasy that I had created for myself. And at that point in time, reality started setting in that if I didn't have business school to go to, I was going to be graduating two months later, because this was March of my senior year, and I was going to have to find a job. The problem was that Number one, I had missed all of your typical college recruiting channels, all of the career fairs that happen at the beginning of the fall semester or at the beginning of the winter or spring semester. I had skipped and missed out on. I had also kind of fucked around during my college years. I didn't have any internship experience. I had been too busy playing World of Warcraft. And unfortunately, I didn't really have any particular skills to show to potential employers beyond just problem-solving skills. Like, oh yeah, I think I'm a smart person. I don't really have a way of proving it beyond the fact that I know I'm pretty smart. That's it. And on top of that, 
I really wasn't excited at the prospect of working at a real job. I had my fantasy of the entrepreneurial life, whatever that meant, that's what I wanted to do, and so the idea of looking for jobs now just kind of felt like dull to me. And so with only two months left until my graduation, I started reluctantly looking into stuff, like can I land a job somewhere, are there industries that I might be interested in? And that's when I realized, okay, there might be a couple of industries that I I'm interested in, namely venture capital and product management. I figured that if I could get a job in one of those two industries, that could be cool because venture capital, I'd be in the middle of the entrepreneurship ecosystem, product management, kind of the closest thing you can do to building your own product. And so I figured if I can land into venture capital or product management, I'll be happy. Now, if you know anything about venture capital or product management, you know that those are two of the hardest fields to penetrate into straight out of undergrad. They're extremely competitive, there are tons of very qualified college students fighting for very few positions. Most of these positions require some sort of computer science background, whether it be a computer science degree or work experience in software engineering, neither of which I had. Like I said, I had zero internships, not one. And so a month later, despite having hustled a lot and really tried my best to talk to people, to apply to jobs, all of that stuff, I realized, okay, this is likely not gonna happen. And so at that point, that's when the grim reality really started setting in. The grim reality that I was gonna need to find some sort of job when I graduated, not in venture capital, not in product management, but most likely in some field that I wasn't particularly interested in, some job that I wasn't particularly passionate about, and that's what I was gonna have to do. I applied to a bunch of companies, a bunch of different roles, all sorts of titles, all sorts of functions, for a lot of them, I just got automatic rejections. For a lot of them, I just made it past the first or second interview, you know, the phone interview or maybe a video call interview, but then it just didn't go anywhere. For a few of them, I made it to the final on-site interviews, but never got an offer. And I can't help but wonder in hindsight if it was because the companies realized that I wasn't super interested in those positions. Even though I'd like to think that I was able to feign interest in them, I probably wasn't actually able to. Either way, I didn't get any offers, and I remember I was just pretty down. It was a point in my life where I wasn't super happy, I was pretty unsure about the future, and yeah, it just wasn't a great time. And so that's why when I see all these people online who are like, yeah, Ivy League math major, he was hashtag done, it's like, no, I was hashtag fucked, not hashtag hashtag done. Anyway, the point is, I found myself in end of May 2016, having just graduated in mid-May 2016, in a pretty weird spot in my life, unsure about the future, and kind of bummed out. But that's when, during the 10 days or so after my graduation, my graduation was on May 16th, 2016 if I remember correctly, but during the 10 days or so after that, I was back home, and I remember I started getting served ads online, on Facebook and on Google, about coding boot camps. I would see all these happy people pointing at computer screens, pair programming as if it was the funnest thing in the world. It's not. But they were doing that, and even though I'd like to think that I'm someone who doesn't get affected by ads, clearly I am, because I wanted to be one of those happy people pointing to a computer screen laughing while pair programming. It was like, hmm, this is actually kind of cool. Like, these coding boot camps, they claim they can teach you how to code to become a software engineer and make six figures. Even though I had a bad impression of what coding was, I was like, maybe maybe this is worth looking into. One of my best friends from high school, my co-founder on Algo Expert, Antoine, had just graduated at the same time as me with a degree in computer science, and he had a job lined up in Silicon Valley with a six-figure salary, and so I was like, maybe I should look into this. And I remember vividly, I messaged my brother. My brother had graduated four years earlier than me, but with a degree in information science, which is kind of a lighter version of computer science, and his first job was as a web developer, and so I asked him, what do you think of this? Like, look at these coding boot camps, do you think this is worth exploring? And he was actually the one who pushed me to apply to a coding boot camp. He's the one who told me, listen, you don't really have a clear future right now, you're kind of fucked, and coding skills are certainly going to be valuable in the future. They're likely going to open up better job prospects for you. YOLO! 
go to this coding boot camp, do it, or at the very least, apply to one of these coding boot camps to see if you can even get in, and then make the decision. And so that's what I did. I remember I told myself, you know what, I'm just gonna apply. Let's see what happens. I don't even know how to write a single line of code. Let's just see what happens. And so on May 25th, 2016, exactly four years ago from today, give or take two days, because today's May 23rd, 2020. But so on May 25th, 2016, I applied to my first coding boot camp. I applied to the coding boot camp called App Academy. I even have the confirmation email. I'll probably put a screenshot here. The confirmation email when I applied and when they gave me the first like preliminary coding exercises or coding like tutorials to learn how to code as a complete beginner. And I remember I started doing them. I started learning, I think it was Ruby that they gave me, learning conditional statements and loops and variables and doing these little coding challenges, which were exactly like coding interview problems, just very, very easy. Those are the types of problems that they ask you when you apply to coding boot camps. So I remember I was doing things like palindrome check or reverse a string or Caesar cipher encrypt or the kinds of easy questions that we have on Algo Expert or even a little bit easier. And I really liked it. I remember thinking like, shit, this is fun. I was an Algo noob at that point, but it was fun, and so I stuck to it. I continued doing their little coding challenges every day, following their tutorials, and I decided I'm gonna learn how to code. And needless to say, the rest is history. After that, I applied to a bunch of other boot camps, I got into them, I decided to attend Full Stack Academy in New York City, where I really fell in love with software engineering. Then after the coding boot camp, I got into Google as a software engineer. The two or so years that I spent working at Google were likely the two most formative years of my entire life life, where I grew the most as a person from many different points of view. Then in tandem with Google, I started building my company, Algo Expert, which happens to be centered around helping software engineers land their dream jobs and preparing them for coding interviews. Then I got into Facebook as a software engineer, and even though my experience at Facebook was very short-lived, it was a very treasured experience where I learned a ton. At the same time that I got into Facebook, I started this YouTube channel, which is all about coding and software engineering and big tech. And of course, now for the past six or seven months, I've been running Algo Expert full time as a 25 year old CEO. And so the point is that over the past four years of my life, all of my accomplishments and successes, which have really been the pinnacle of my accomplishments and successes throughout my entire life, have been entirely related to and attributable to coding and learning how to code. And I suspect that all of my future successes and accomplishments are also gonna be intimately related to coding. So to summarize, all of these amazing things that have happened to me in recent years all stem from that one decision that I made on that one fateful night on May 25th, 2016 when I decided to learn how to code. Now, of course, I don't want to over-index on this one particular night. Of course, this is more for dramatic effect, but it does still stand that learning how to code was the best decision of my life. That concludes story time with your favorite 25-year-old CEO. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found my story fun, exciting, inspirational, motivational, cringy, dumb, stupid. If you found it, any of those words, then don't don't forget to tickle the like button if you haven't already, of course. Then tickle the subscribe button if you haven't already, of course. Do it now if you haven't already, and otherwise, I will see you in the next video.